Hello, my beautiful planty people, and how are you doing today? I hope you are doing wonderfully. I am doing well. I had so much going on here. <laughs> so today I thought I would just do a quick top five video. Um, I think someone requested, or a couple people had requested this video quite a while ago, and I just like didn't get around to it, but I did write it down. So here we are. So today I'm going to be sharing with you my top five easiest, uncommon, bougie <laughs> house plants. Uh, for those of you who are new here, hi, hello, welcome. My name is Nikki. This is my channel, Plants, Pots, and Whatnots. And for all of my GFPs, that's gluttons for punishment, that keep coming back for more. Thank you so much. I love you guys to bits. Okay, so enough with the talking. On with the chloroform. <clears throat> okay, uh, so I have picked five plants from my collection of uncommon or rare, whatever we want to call them. Um, I don't get it all bent out of shape about that whole label of rare because it's hard to know what else to call them and it sound okay. I mean, we can call them bougie, but they're not really bougie. Um, I think I think when people say rare, it just means stuff that you can't go to your, you know, local grocery store or your local nursery and pick up. Um, so they're rare to find in a local grocery store or nursery. <laughs> okay. Um, don't be hating on the people that say rare. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Uh, so I went around my house and I chose, chose five of my plants from my collection that really I just never have to worry about like ever. They grow really well. They're really easy care. Um, they handle underwatering well. They're not crazy picky about humidity and those are kind of the, the basis that I'm picking these plants off of. Uh, so all the plants you're about to see are my easiest plants in my collection. Um, some of these are actually much more easy than even some of the common plants that I have in my collection. So, okay, let's just start with the one that's sitting right here. So this beautiful babe is my philodendron tortum. It is getting a massive. It's kind of hard to, here's some leaves for you. <laughs> um, so this guy I got last year, it desperately needs to be put on a proper pole because this just isn't working anymore, you know? It's getting a little top heavy. Oh, it's bad. It's bad, guys. Okay. Anyway, so I bought this little guy, <laughs> this big guy, when it was just tiny. I think it was maybe three or four leaves, if that. And, you know, as you can see, the most recent leaf is quite large. It's just getting huge. Honestly, this plant is so super easy. Um, I water it. It can handle, you know, going substantially dry. The soil that I have it in or the mix that I have it in is extremely well draining and it dries really quickly. It's also in terracotta. Um, and I've, I've heard people say that this is a difficult plant. I mean, in my experience, it's been super, super easy. I don't give it anything else and it's right out in my collection. This is not one that I have like in my Ikea cabinet um, or in a greenhouse. It's never been in crazy high humidity. And so it just adjusted to that temperature and that humidity level and it's been growing like a weed. Like I probably get at least a leaf a month, um, even in the winter and it's amazing. It's amazing. And I think it's really cool too because it's it's nice to have, and I've said this before, like a variety of different plants in your collection. So it's not just like all big, you know, velvety heart-shaped leaves or all one type. Um, and these ones really have the palm, like they're almost like fronds. And so it just adds some texture to your collection and, and points of interest rather than just like this big wall of green. As much as I love big walls of green, um, it's just nice for your collection to have some texture. So that is my plant number one, the philodendron tortum. I'll give you one last look at her beautiful leaves there. It's just so unique. It's very whimsical. Tropical. <laughs> 
Okay, so that was plant number one. Let's move along to plant number two. Okay, plant number two has got to be this gal here. Um, there is something about the philodendron hybrids that just work. So you have, uh, you know, your cross, your philodendron melanocrysum uh, gloriosum cross, which is your philodendron splendid, um, or sorry, varicosum melanocrysum cross, which is the splendid. Um, you've got your melanocrysum gloriosum cross, which is your glorious. Uh, and then we have this one as well. This one is a cross between a philodendron soteroi and a philodendron, um, my brain just fell out, varicosum. <laughs> Um, and all of those hybrids are just incredibly easy. You'll actually see another one of those hybrids here down uh, the list a little bit, but this one here is my Philodendron Majestic, and it is the cross, like I said, between the Soderoi and the Varicosum. Now, if you've been with me, you've seen this guy before. Uh, this is her newest leaf. Let me get you in there for a peek. How stunning is that leaf? It's just beautiful. It's got that silveriness, if I can get it up close there. <laughs> and it's just so pretty. So this guy also is in desperate need of a pull. Um, grows incredibly well. I got this maybe like at the end of the summer and it was just a little cutting. It was a couple tiny little leaves and it has just exploded. As you can see, it's about two feet tall at this point. It puts out a leaf like every two weeks. It's got another leaf on the way right here already, and it's just an incredible plant. Now, not only is it crazy easy, very simple, low maintenance, but the leaves and everything, it's just a stunning, stunning plant. Um, they're a little harder to track down and get your hands on, but I highly recommend, if you can nab one, grab it, don't hesitate. They're gorgeous and they're super, super easy to take care of. So that is definitely uh, plant number two, my Philodendron Majestic. One more shot, one more shot. Ooh, she's so pretty. <laughs> you can also see on the back there of that leaf, um, you can kind of see the varicosum redness on the back of the leaf there and then you've kind of got like varicosum in the back and soderoi on the front you know anyway okay this next one is a big gal so i'm gonna go ahead and put these back to save myself some space and we'll come back and i'll show you plant number three okay my next plant is gonna be a little difficult to get in the frame here so i'm gonna have to move over and put her on my lap that's kind of why i have it um a little bit further back than I normally would, but <laughs> are you ready? You can see her, she's huge. <sighs> you still can't see all of her. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> this is one of my philodendron glorious plants. So like I said before, this is a cross between the philodendron gloriosum and the philodendron melanocrysum. So if we take a look at these leaves, you can really see the parentage there. You've got the darker foliage um, from and the, the length kind of from the melanocrysum, but you've got that beautiful veining and the more heart shaped top um, and the sinus from the gloriosum. They're just so incredibly beautiful. And what I have found with this plant, I've had it for over a year now, and what I've found with this plant is that every leaf just kind of looks a little bit different. Um, one kind of leans a little bit more towards one or the other of the parent plants. Um, you can see this leaf here is a little bit more round so kind of looks a little more gloriosum-esque, whereas this leaf really has the melanocrysum um, properties. Let me spin her around here. You can see her newest leaf. <laughs> She's really big. Let me see if I can better her. There's her new, <laughs> so awkward. There's her newest leaf right there. She's beautiful. Now we just did go through a treatment because I did find some spider mites on her. Um, it wasn't like 
a horrible infestation or anything. Let me spin her around so you can look at the leaves again here. Woo. Uh, some of the leaves fared a little bit better than others. This um, was the second oldest leaf. This is the weird leaf, if you'll remember. Um, so this isn't actually even the original plant. The original plant that I got, that I bought last year is down in my greenhouse. And that's kind of like my mother plant. This is um, one of the first cuttings that I took. And I mean, that was even less time ago. And this is how big it is already. They grow so, so fast. And they're just so beautiful. Um, <clears throat> anywho, so this leaf was one that grew... Uh, it was the first one to come out, nope, second one to come out when it was in my greenhouse. And it came out without that like soft velvety look. It it very much resembles almost like a pastazanum or something. It's really weird. Anyway, this leaf didn't hold up quite as well to the treatment um, as the other ones. I'm hoping it kind of snaps back. My hands are sticky from that tortum. The tortums have a lot of those uh, extra floral nectaries, and so they do get really sticky. Anyways, <laughs> tangent <laughs> for those of you who like it. Um, <clears throat> anyway, highly recommend um, this particular plant. If you want a plant that grows really fast and is extremely rewarding and gets big leaves quickly, this is definitely the way to go. This plant is insane. I get a new leaf about every three weeks, um, even like I said, throughout the winter and the leaves are just, they just are. You know? um, it takes really well. It's not picky when it comes to humidity. Um, it does handle under watering well. I don't get, you know, like um, like brown edges or anything like that from underwatering or humidity. You can see that these leaves are just, they look lovely. We do have a little bit of spider mite damage, uh, if, uh, if you can see it there. But <clears throat> other than that, incredible plant, super rewarding, fast growing, easy care. I mean, honestly, if I, if I had to like rank these in order from like five to one, one being the best. This would probably be the number one easiest plant um, as far as it kind of ticks all of the boxes, if that makes sense. So that is plant number three, my philodendron glorious. Okay, uh, we are almost to the end here. So uh, plant number four is this beauty. She is a philodendron. I feel like I'm sitting way too low. So this is a philodendron esmeraldense. Um, these leaves will eventually get super long and they just look incredible. They have these like ribbed fronts and uh, here's a picture of what they look like when they get a little bit more mature. But honestly, they are beautiful. Let me get you up close. This is her newest leaf here and you can see how they get this gorgeous red hue. They are just beautiful. There is the older leaf that was the previous one that came out and then we had this one and now this one so this one just unfurled not long ago so it's got a ways to go um, but the coloring on these leaves is just beautiful uh, we also have another one uh, hot on the heels right here I don't know if you can see that or not get yeah, right there <laughs> And uh, just a really, really incredible plant. So this one is currently in my Ikea uh, like green wall cabinet. But even before that, it was just out on my shelf and it was just producing leaf after leaf. Um, I haven't had it too long. I think I got this maybe midsummer. Um, could have been even in the fall, early fall maybe. Um, but I have the Anthurium Esmeraldense as well, and they are both incredible plants, great growers, super low maintenance. This plant has not given me an ounce of trouble. It's never had a pest. <laughs> um, it, it takes really well to underwatering. 
and it's just it does well wherever I put it and that's kind of what you want out of a plant you don't want to have to you know have one specific spot that plant will only grow in that corner of your house you know what I mean and it's just kind of done well and been happy wherever it's been and so um, it's a plant that you don't really hear talked about a whole lot and I, I'm not really sure why because they are absolutely beautiful um, but I highly recommend this guy if you happen to get your hands on one or see one I don't know what they're going for right now um, I would uh, the majority of my collection I picked up long before the whole <laughs> insanity of 2020 happened and all the plant prices skyrocketed um, so and I get comments on that a lot like oh I can never afford the plants that are in your collection and honestly it's because I've been collecting for a couple years now that and a lot of these plants I got you know between 50 and 100 dollars whereas now they're between three and four hundred dollars so anyway this is one of them I like I said I don't know what they're going for now but if you're able to get your hands on one highly recommend um, they just get more and more beautiful as the plant grows and uh, they're super easy. So that is plant number four and we are now moving on. You may be able to see it in the frame already because I, I goofed. Um, <laughs> and so let's go ahead and move on to the last plant, plant number five. So this beautiful lady is uh, the last plant on my list. Um, I don't know if I just got lucky with this particular one, but I have had no issues with this Monstera Albo. Um, it has been a great grower. Um, as you can see, there is a lot of white on the plant. She's a little dusty. She definitely needs to be dusted. But there are her leaves. You can see the left side of the plant, or I guess the right side if you're looking that way. Uh, is much more white and that tends to happen with a lot of plants with variegation um, that one part because it's the variegation is in the stem so if the say the right side of the stem is a little bit more white than the left side it's going to grow more white off of that side um, but it has a beautiful beautiful mixture of white and green there's you know more than enough green to sustain the plant I haven't had any yellowing. I think I have one little brown tip right there. Uh, but other than that, this has been an amazing plant. Now, I got this plant back in 2019. Um, it was a one leaf cutting, if you can imagine. And um, I actually got it for my 500 subscriber um, gift from, <clears throat> uh, 500 subscriber gift from my friends at House of Monstera and I absolutely lost my mind. This was incredibly generous and so sweet and uh, I have cherished this guy ever since. So um, it's been a great grower. Um, she's actually really easy. She doesn't mind being underwatered, which I know sounds odd because everything we hear is like, you know, because of the white, you have to be really careful, blah, blah, blah. Um, but she's been incredible. An amazing plant, absolutely beautiful variegation. And uh, I'm sorry, but she's worth the hype. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, just look. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so that is my last plant, my Monstera Albo. I love her. She is beautiful. And I'm just so happy to have her. <laughs> so I will go ahead and end that here. Uh, thank you guys so much. For watching this video today. Uh, I love you all to bits. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if you're still here, go ahead and leave this emoji down in the comments section. <laughs> um, I know it's a super easy one today, right? Just leave this emoji. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you. So I will go ahead and wrap this up by saying Thank you guys so much for liking and watching and commenting and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. It is a huge help to my channel and I really do appreciate it. Um, and as always, have an amazing and wonderful and lovely day, night, week, month, and year and your upcoming weekend. And I will see you in the next video. Mwah!